All right, all right. What's going on, everybody? It's another Monday night. The Father's Authority. You know what to do. We are going to take this minute and share this video on your page so we can get every father possible involved and impacted by what we are going to do tonight. So I'm about to do the same thing. Uh, I'm going to share and just put we are live um, up there when you share it. Uh, there we go. Yeah. Give you guys a second. Share that. All right. All right. It's time. It is seven o'clock and it is time for a father's authority. You guys know, for those of you who are just tuning in for the first time, my name is Nate Holloway. We are Father's Authority, which is a part of Kingdom Relationships. And what a Father's Authority is designed to do is to impact and change the narrative on fatherhood and fatherlessness. Um, we want to impact every father in the world possible with tools to become successful fathers and to come back into the lives of their children or even be have a great impact in the lives of their children. Guys, tonight, I have a great friend of mine. We go all the way back to the NSU days. My friend, Brother Calvin Austin. What's up, Calvin? What's happening, my man? Man, it's good to have you, man. It's been a long time. It's been a minute, bro. <laughs> it's been a minute. Yeah, guys, uh, Calvin, he's a, he's a minister of music. Uh, he plays for several people. He's played for some great celebrities. Uh, he is the maestro. He can sing. Uh, oh, Lord. Yeah, you know you can sing. <laughs> uh, Calvin and I go back to uh, Norfolk State days. Uh, we were in college together. He was a little, um, about a year ahead of me. Mm. Um, but we go back to the gospel choir. Gospel uh, choir. Fine arts building, music oh, major, yeah. uh, church, uh, Kojic. Conventions, How everything. That? How about that? <laughs> everything, man. But Cal, I'm glad to have you on tonight, you, man. man. Um, we tell us a little bit about yourself, man, about your life, about your family, and then about your life with or without your father. Um, I'm a country boy from Lynchburg, Virginia. Some may have heard of it, some may not have heard of it, but I was born in Lynchburg, Virginia in a little country town called Madison Heights. And then we moved to Lynchburg. Uh, um, my mother and father separated like when I was young, like when I was about six. So uh, my mom raised it. I'm the youngest of three. I had an older brother, older sister, and I was the baby. And um, again, like they separated at six. So uh, my mom had us three. Being a strong black single mom, um, I still saw my dad because on on the weekends my dad would pick me up and take me to my grandma. So I would stay in the country. When we moved to Lynchburg, he would bring me to see my to stay with my grandma on the weekends. So I would see him, you know, and um, hang out with him for a little while as well. So I still was in touch with him, but we were just not in the same house. Okay. And so uh, yeah, yeah. So from my dad. And his side of the family is where I get all the singing because my dad is a quartet singer. Okay, okay. My, my dad is, uh, you know, in Lynchburg, Mass Nights. He's he's kind of a well known quartet singer. So I grew up seeing him do his thing. So that's why I get the music and all that. And all my cousins, everybody sing. We used to have a little quartet group when I was young called <laughs> the Voices of Hope. Dot. I was the youngest one, so I was the one that sang high and smiled. I didn't read, I was too shy. But they called me the little Michael at that time. You know, I just sing, smile, and sing high. But um, so I grew up around music, seeing my father do his thing, and uh, but my mom raised us. So, so he was so, he was around, but he wasn't in the house. So how how was his impact? Even though you had time with him, and he would. He it wasn't he wasn't in the house. How was his impact on your life? My dad, when I did see him, he was always consistent. I get my personality, my um, I guess calm, 
persona for my father. Um, when he would come and get me and take me to my grandmother's house, which is his mother, he would just be there. And my grandma was a woman who never got her driver's license, but could do anything she wanted to do under the sun. She had the <laughs> gift to make you do whatever. And so she would always correct those who were around her. And so when he would get there, she would be going in and he'd just be on the wall, smiling, shaking his head. <laughs> never get rattled. I've never seen my father out of control. Never okay. seen my father angry. I never seen my father ready to fight. So I never saw that side. My father was always the level-headed guy, and I get that from him, you know. So he was big, big, big influence on that part, because I wasn't, you know, although I was raised in the city around fighting and stuff, but I always saw my dad being the calm one, so that led me to be like, you ain't got to fight. You just be intellectual. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right. Just communicate. And, and So I learned that, like I said, the talent the calm, and he was always respectful to everybody because everybody knew him. So he okay. was nobody he wouldn't talk to or speak to. He never got the big head and said, oh, I am something. Mm -mm. He's still the, the same man to this day, and I got that from him. So he was okay. very influential on in my life. That's good. That's good. So his impact, he gave you your persona and your character. That's good. That's very good. much That's good. so. So what does fatherhood mean to you? Fatherhood means um, strength, protection, guidance, validation. Um, uh, when um, I think of fatherhood like a lion, you know, a lion got all these things around him, and the lion is the coolest cat on the field. And uh -huh. if you want to ever see the lion get out of character, mess with anything in his family. Until then, you just lay back. You think he ain't paying you no mind. But let his family or anybody in his family cry out, then his head go up. And, and, and that's, that's what I think a father should be. Um, your family should feel protected when you're around. Your family should feel secure when you're around. Your family should think, you know, I I, I recall my, my kids are grown now. My daughter's 17. My son is 14. So, um, but when they was going up, anything that broke, they brought it straight to me. <laughs> they said, Daddy, fix it. And I had to be the Superman and try to do it. And somehow either I fixed it or replaced it. And because <laughs> that was my job. Daddy, fix it. <laughs> You know, um, something was wrong, daddy, fix it. Now, um, thank God for their mother. The mother was the nurturer, but I was the one that could fix it and give them strength and let them hold their head up. They're like, all right, long as daddy is around, I know things is going to be cool. When they're storming, they like, it's daddy here. There's a light. It's daddy <laughs> here. We hear some noise. Where is daddy at? You feel what I'm saying? So I gave them that gotcha. sense of security. That sense of uh, everything's going to be all right. You know, I notice, you know, when my kids are around me, they can hold their head up. You know, it's like, yeah, well, my dad says so I ain't got to worry about nothing. So that's what I think a father should bring security, bring confidence to everything that's around him, especially in his family. And that's good. That's good because it makes them feel, like you said, that they feel protected because they know daddy is there and daddy's going to do that. My, my son is like that. If something, if he breaks something, one of his toys or something break, daddy fix it. Daddy fix, daddy is broke. Daddy, daddy, daddy. He, he feels like I can do anything. And, and it makes you feel proud as a father. It makes you feel oh, good. Yeah. You. But it also makes you, it also challenges you to have to step up and make sure All that, day long. Right, that you are that man that if they come to you, because if they come to you and daddy don't fix it that one time, it could break them. To break their yes. spirit, but and so You're we have, to, right. yeah, we have to keep building ourselves up, seeking God, being uh, learning because we're always learning as fathers. So we have to keep learning so they can always come to you. And I believe even at your kids' age of seventeen to fourteen, and even as they get grown, they still got to be able to come to dad, and they still gonna look at you as that protecting that strength. And oh, I, yeah. I remember, 
I remember hearing T.D. Jakes, you know, talk about it one time, you know, I, I guess the same way we brag on God and our children brag on us when we hear him, you're like, oh, my daddy is strong. And like, oh, uh, but my daddy can beat up your daddy, you know, uh, but my <laughs> daddy can do this. You feel what I'm saying? You know, like uh -huh. when you're taking groceries, uh, oh, daddy can pick up anything. You hear that? You pick up an extra bag just to show him like, yeah, daddy got it. You might be <laughs> trembling and shaking, but in front of your kids, <laughs> You're gonna be the Superman that they see because you right. ever if they ever lose that, then what they got? They got then you your kids looking to somebody else to be Superman, and that that'll break a man's spirit. That'll break yeah, a man's definitely, spirit. Definitely. Yeah, that, that will hurt. So um what's the best part of being a father? Man, uh for me, uh watching my kids grow up and um, seeing that something that um, that I helped produce and seeing them grow up would have their own mind and own personality. I'm proud of my kids because neither one of my kids are followers. Okay. And I, I, thank, I, I thank God that I, I influenced that because I didn't want them to be, you know, just because the crowd is doing something, you know, because that's how you end up getting caught up in stupid stuff because you want to please the crowd. But they saw enough individuality in me. They said, OK, I, I'm, I'm good. Now, I've drilled this to them. I was like, just because somebody's doing that don't mean you have to do that. You have to be your own person. If everybody's going against the grain, that's not your job. Your job is to be who you are. And I like influencing that. And um, uh, I know my, my kids being my kids, people are like, oh, Calvin, I know you throwing this music and throwing that at them. I don't ever want to force anything on them. I want them to cultivate it. And then once I see it cultivated, then that's when I step in. Because sometimes that's good. us parents can force things on kids and then they turn away from it. And then when they get old, I wish I'd had to do it. Yeah, because you forced it. But when you let somebody get a hunger for themselves and then you cultivate their hunger, then that's something they can grab hold to. So that's the stages that my kids are in now. You know, my daughter then got her photography and she really striving in that. And so, yeah, I'm doing all I can to push that. She get ready to go to school and learn more about it. My son, he is he doubled and dabbled in baseball, basketball, and different sports. Now he wants to come around and do the music thing. Okay. So my thing is to sit back and find out, okay, where is his heart? Once I find out where it is, then that's my job to step in. But I ain't gonna ever force anything on either one of them because I don't want them to get bitter towards it because they think it's something that I want them to do. And they start to hate it. You feel what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So, you know, the best part is me sitting back. I know my kids think I'm strange because I just watch them. A lot of times I don't say nothing. I'm sitting in, I have my own chair in the house and they walk by. I'm just walking like, wow, they're growing up. You know, and I, if I ever post pictures on, I always post pictures of them being babies because they're always going to be my babies in my eyes. <laughs> you you, you, you going get there. You're going to get there, you know. <laughs> my son is all almost my height, but he's going to always be my baby and my daughter too. So watching them grow up and be young adults and, uh, and they love God on their That's own. That's always good. Yeah. They on, their own. on their own. On their own. That's big. Not yeah, it uh, is. Let me, because I know they're watching me. Oh no, they love God <laughs> on their own. And that's a blessing to me. So that's, that's the best part. Watching something that you brought or created, help create, you know, come to life and blossom. I love it. And that's good. And that shows that you lived in front of them the example that they need to see, especially when it comes to their relationship with God. Exactly. Um, I thought about like what you said about forcing the music on them. Um, when my son was born, I just knew I had visions of him playing drums like me, you know, us getting together on drum sets when he was younger. I would take him to the music store. I have a picture where he's on one drum set. I'm on the other one. And, I, and just for him to like drums, I was like, yes, yes. But then I realized I don't want to force that on him if he doesn't play a drum. My wife, I don't remember how she asked me the question, but I think she, because she wants him to learn, want him to learn how to play guitar. Mm -hmm. I think she asked me, would I be upset if he didn't play drums? And I had to think about it. And I was like, actually, I wouldn't because right. – 
if he grows up and he doesn't want to play drums, then whatever he loves to do and is passionate about, that's what that's I it. want him to do. I don't want him to ever, ever to resent uh, playing. I would. I, if he was to play drums, that'd be great. Right. But if he don't, that would still be great. If he wasn't in music at all, that would still be great because he's doing what he loves to do. And that was Passion. a good point that you made. I like that because at first I was just like, oh, he's going to play drums. He go, I was putting, I set him in front of the TV with you two, with Tony Rorster Jr. playing, you know, all these cats. I'm just like, okay, I'm waiting, I'm waiting. You right. know, then one point, when I take him to the music store, he'll get on a drum set, hit a couple beats, and he'll be like, Daddy, you play. And I'm like, no, you play. So, you know, Daddy, your turn. And then he never wanted to get back on there. So I'm like, okay, right now drums may not be right. what he wants to do. But like you say, your son is coming back around to the music. Maybe he may come back around to right. it later. But right now, that's not something that I look at him as being passionate about. So I'm not going to try to force it on him. That's the word. That's passion. There we go. Uh, oh, yeah. Something happened. I lost connection. Yeah. You see me? Yeah, I'm, I'm here. All right, guys. Sorry, we lost connection real quick. We know how technology is sometimes, but we're going to keep rolling. So, Calvin, um, how important are a father's words to his child? Um, father's words is everything. Um, a father's words can make or break you now. You know, like I said, mothers are the nurturers. So the key is be with the mothers more uh, a lot. So the mother has to be the friend, the nurturer, take care and play, play. But when it comes to dad, I know when dad speaks, dad is gonna speak from his heart and it's something that's gonna make or break me to my son. Son, you will do this, you will be strong, you will be a man. You will be intelligent. You know, um, my daughter, you are beautiful. You will succeed. Hearing those words coming from the daddy, that girl, you are beautiful. I am proud of you. You know, you, you, you kind of expect it from mommy because mommy going to hug and cuddle like you. But when it comes from your dad, I remember when my son was playing recreational basketball in a league. Um, I don't know how old he's about 12 or younger. And they played the game. He played his best game. They didn't win. And so, you know, he had his head down. And I went and put my arm around him. I said, son, I'm proud of you. He just looked at me and started crying. I was like, and I said, it's going to be all right. And I thought to myself, I guess that's all he wanted to make sure was I didn't disappoint daddy. Mm -hmm. You feel what I'm saying? I know yeah, we lost. I, I wish we would have won. But daddy said he was proud. And a tear rolled down his face. And I said, yeah, this is what my word's supposed to do. Make make them feel like, yes, oh, I am important because my daddy said so. Mm -hmm. yep. So my words uh, is life and death to my kids and my family, my wife and everybody. But my words is life and death. It's very important. Yeah, it is. It is. I, it's funny you say that about your son being proud. I do that with my son now. So every morning when I drop him off at school, and I know everybody hears me say this all the time, every morning when I drop him off at school, I get out of level to him. I look him in the face and I say, son, remember, you are great. You are a champion. You can do anything. And Jesus loves you. He says, OK. And um, but and he expects that now. And I say, be great and do great today to do something great. So now when I take him to school, he has to show me what he did the day before. He said, dad, I want to show you my work. And he showed us, I said, son, that's great. I'm proud of his smile. And then we're at home. Whenever he does something, he figures something out. He, look, daddy, I did it. I did it. I said, it's great, son. I'm proud of you. He's just so happy to see that smile on his face because I, yeah. at, at this age, because he knows that I'm proud of him. I tell him that he's done something great. It makes me feel good because I know that he's learning to be confident in what he's doing. 
and that he's learning that he has greatness within at an early age. Because I didn't have that. I didn't wow. have that. I didn't have that. That's I was 13 because you know, I never met my father. Um, oh, wow. Everybody who know me know uh, Bishop James Moore as my father. He's he's my godfather, but he raised me. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, he, he got me at age 13 and helped my mom raise me. Wow. So because you guys probably heard me call him dad because he raised me. Um, wow. But I never met my real father. But I didn't start getting words spoken into my life until I was 13. So oh, wow. it took a longer it took longer for it to take root in me. It wasn't until I became an adult that those words started taking root in wow. me. And I started seeing from mentors that um, I do have greatness within me and I could do these things. But to have my son um, get it now, it, 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 it warms my heart because I can give to him what I didn't get until wow. later age. Yeah. yeah so that's powerful. Yeah, what advice would you give um, other fathers, especially new fathers out here, um, about the importance of their words to their children? What we talk about, or what advice, give, what piece of advice that can you give to new fathers and fathers in general that would help them impact their lives, impact the lives of their children? Um. Well, like what we we're saying, realizing that their words is life and death to their kids. But not only that, um, kids do what they see. Mm -hmm. And um, it, we can say all day, don't do as I do, but do as I say. But society has taught us Whatever you see, style, mm -hmm. hair, you feel what I'm saying? Yeah. We do as we, society don't tell us how to dress. They just show us. Show us, uh-huh. The same thing we do as parents, as fathers, we show our kids, and we can tell, oh, don't be no knucklehead, but we are in the street, out in the streets being knuckleheads, come home drunk and wants to beat on the wife and do stupid stuff and then say, don't you do like that and then wonder why your son is out there hitting on chicks. You feel what right. I'm saying? Yeah. So best thing I can do is be the example and set the example and speak the example. Because if you speak in something different than what you're doing, your actions are going to outweigh your words. Mm -hmm. And so first we got to be. And so I'm showing my son, this is what it takes to work and my daughter. So they know that it does music, wedding, studio, bracelets, anything, sound. I want revenue and I want them to learn revenue. Don't just come from one place. Right. Revenue has to come. You never know what's in life. And when you do get it, don't be want to. I want to keep up with the Joneses. No, the Joneses do whatever the Joneses do. I want to make sure that I'm comfortable. We have roof, lights, electricity, food. You feel what I'm saying? I tell you. All the responsible things in life, I want to make sure it's provided. And then not only that, never live from check to check. Right. Because some yep. people make that mistake and, you know, Lord, we stressing every week. Mm -mm, no, that's why you get multiple streams of income. And in order to do that, you can't be lazy. Right. So I, I, I want to make sure my son ain't seeing me being lazy. Dad, you in the house playing video games beside me every day. No, <laughs> no. You feel what I'm saying? I feel you totally. I, I you feel what I'm saying? Dad is coming. Okay, dad is going to work there. Dad is doing that. Dad is doing Daddy's name is respected. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because daddy works, daddy do his job, and daddy provides. You know, you hungry, it's because you didn't choose was you chose not to eat what's in the house. <laughs> but I'm gonna make sure something is in the house. Right. Because this is what I'm working to do. So be what you say and then say what you mean, you know, because they're gonna do what you they see. They're gonna go up and be what they see. And if my grow, my son grew up to be lazy, it's not because he saw his dad being lazy. Because that's I'm far mm -hmm. from lazy. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna cut grass. I'm gonna do whatever I need to do. When something broke, mm -mm, I'm getting under the car first 
And if I can't fix it, then I'm going to pay somebody to fix it. You know <laughs> what I'm saying? I, you know, I ain't, I ain't scared to get my hands dirty because I want him to, you know, when I'm fixing stuff and he's there, uh-uh, come outside and you're going to learn how to do this. You know, right. when it's time to cut grass, uh, come on outside. You need to learn how to do this because you ain't going to be lazy. You're going you're gonna to know how to do these things because you're going to be somebody's father one day. Right. And if I was, and if I wasn't the right example in front of you, you ain't gonna know what to do. Right. Yep. So my my, my best thing is be what you want them to be, and for them, you know. Uh, hopefully it's legit and it's real. Right. Be it, and then speak, speak, speak life into you, because your words are life and death. They are. Yeah, that's good, man. I, I I wish my wife would let me get up under the hood first. Sometimes she won't let me. She made me really? take it to the uh, <laughs> she know I'm not mechanically inclined though. She's like, no, you taking that thing to a Nissan. Wow. <laughs> Always mess with like, I need to, I need to let me fix. I'll figure it out. She's like, babe, nope. Make the appointment. <laughs> but the reason, you know, the reason I'm like this, because uh how I grew up, you know, um, like I said, from a single parent home. And I guess you can relate. Um yeah. uh, your mom had to do everything, and so uh, we didn't have the best of everything. I grew up poor, man. Yeah, I, I agree with you. I, too. You know what I'm saying? I grew up poor. I know what food stamps is. I know it was being hungry, you know, and not having, you know, everybody on the first day of school had the Jordans and name brand stuff. I'm wearing my brother's old stuff. Mm-hmm. I can't get fresh haircuts because we couldn't afford it. So, you know, I don't, I don't wish it was different. Actually, I thank God for it because it helps me appreciate life now. Right. Yep. And so being like that, I learned how to do a lot of stuff. I learned how to cut my own hair. I learned how to fix stuff. So mm-hmm. now I get around folks and friends. I have a friend that knows how to work on cars. So if anything happens, he's the first one I hit up. I said, man, this is going on. He, and I said, can I fix it? He said, yeah, you can do it. I said, well, tell me what to do. I don't change radiators, tires, change oils, <laughs> all that stuff. Because if I can save money and do it myself, why yeah. am I going to pay somebody to do something that I can do? You, you feel yeah. what I'm saying? So I learned yeah, that right. from not having nothing. And so it makes me appreciate what I have and learn to do stuff. And, you know, like I'm so, you know, people that pay other folks to cut your grass. Like, no, as long as I can still move, I'm going to cut my grass. <laughs> Now, as long as I get <laughs> sun, my grass is going to get cut. You feel what I'm saying? So, yeah, I feel you. Know, you. I feel you. Be- because of where I came from, I-, I learned how to do a lot of things just so, you know, if there's a time I didn't have money to do it, I know I can do it still. Yeah. And I, I never, and you know, I made that joke about my wife's job. I never, I never learned um, cars because we didn't have one. So, wow. you know, it was like when I got older, and I got my own car. Some of the things I had to do myself, I had to learn. Um, but it was like, it was the hard because I didn't have that dad there or that right. male figure there to show me. And that's that's the was important, importance of a father too because I didn't have someone there to say, okay, son, this is what you do. My male, my figure was, we were in church. Wow. So, because he was the pastor Everything. My time was spent in church. My time was spent on the drum set. My time was spent, you know, devotional service, Sunday wow. service, WWW. Those things. Not saying it's bad, right? But th- th- that's that's the core that I was taught. And I I would I used to wish that I had a father or uncle that could teach me how to work on cars wow. uh, back in the day. Because I had a friend who his dad worked on cars, and they would go and and whenever his dad wanted a new car. He ain't going to buy a new car. He went into the junkyard and got a shell. And he put really? a car together. I remember one time he had his car, and we were riding this high school. We had no back seats in the car, which is speakers. It was a, it was a, a, a like a 66 Pinto. Wow. And we had speakers in the back seat. And it, I mean, he put the car together. And I was just like, and so all his sons knew how to work on cars and put cars together. So, wow. but it's like you said, when you are the example, and I said to, to go back to where you said, be the example that you want mm-hmm. them to be, because he was a mechanic and he didn't go out and spend money because he built cars. His sons built cars, you know, because uh, my godfather raised me, was a pastor in church. 
I know church. You know, right, and right. Things, you know, and so it's like what we are in front of our kids is what our kids. Like you said, if you're in front of your son and you're beating on your your wife or your girlfriend all the time, then he's going to grow up no matter unless someone catches him and changes his thinking, right? And changes his mind, then that he's going to grow up being that. Like for me, exactly. I grew up in the hood, but I had mentors that started age thirteen that changed my trajectory. That wow. changed my mind, changed my thinking, and said to me, you're not going to be a product of the hood. So wow. therefore, I'm not a product of the hood. I never wow. thought hood. I never hung out. I was never one of those people that was like they're fighting all the time and part of the hood because my godfather used to come and get me every day after school and take me, and I'm sitting around in the church with him. Wow. Either I'm in there for John Praxon or I'm just sitting at church. And I used to always wonder, why do I have to sit? At church all the time when I could be out there with my friends, but a lot of my friends in jail that I wanted to hang with, some yeah. of them are dead that I wanted yeah. to hang with. So that 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 example that was in front of me kept me from being statistic. You know? have it. And I there appreciate it. that. I really do. So um man, Calvin, man, I appreciate you coming on tonight, bro. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Just to piggyback on what you said, a lot of people don't know your history or, or know where you came from because, like I said, you grew up poor, so you you understand um, that side of life. Um, my mom's side of the family is the you know the party, you know, have a good time, and nothing wrong uh -huh. with it. That's just what it is. My dad's side of the family, they had the preachers. Everybody was a preachers, pastors, and you know, so. If I didn't have my grandma on the weekends and I would stay with her in the summertime mm -hmm. and I didn't have that influence and my dad being who he was, that I could have been in the same thing. You know, my brother passed not too long ago because um, he had liver disease because he drank a lot. OK, so that could have been my path going to the party, drinking, smoking weed. Mm -hmm. I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't have a desire for none of that stuff because I had a different path put in front of me. Right. If I didn't have that path and I had my dad to see, oh, my dad didn't do all that. My dad was singing and people loved him. You know, still to this day when he sings and people love it, I'm like, wow. So I ain't got to, you know, do all that to, you know, be somebody special. Mm -hmm. If I didn't have that different path. We, you, we'd have been in the, in the hood together. You feel what I'm saying? Right. Robbing right. and drinking and smoking and fighting, you know, because I, I saw all of that. But like you said, all those people that we saw, where are they now? Right. Some of them, you know, right. life has hit them hard. But thank God I had an example to see from my dad and my grandma who was in the church. So, you know, I ain't going to say nothing was wrong with the church. Thank God for the church, actually. Right. You know, now, church ain't a full spectrum of life, of course, because you got to live out once you get outside of the church. Right. And yeah. like you say, you didn't have nobody to show you stuff outside of the church, like working on cars, fixing stuff, you know. And like I said, when I got to college and started being around fruit and getting friends in your circle, it shows you who you are, too. Getting friends that know how to do stuff. And I ain't never ashamed to like, yo, can you show me how to do that? <laughs> right. You know, my, my friend that works on cars, I tell him this is going out here, come to the house and look. He said, you got in here, leave. And I'd be so mad. I'm like, man, you ain't gonna fix it. <laughs> he said, no, nah, you got it. So I'll be out there tinkering until I get it. And But I appreciate it because I know if I didn't do it, my friend is going to help me out. So right. you, you need to surround yourself with good influential men, you know, so you can be that good influential man to your son. Because if you don't know how to do nothing, you can't fix nothing. You can't, you know, you know what 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 your son is gonna grow up to be. Right. And you, now, you made a good you made a good point just now when you said surround yourself with influential men. You know, there's a lot of guys out there who may say, uh, I'm not a good father because I didn't have a father. Or I don't know how to be. But if you're intentional about surrounding yourself with mentors and men that could teach you, that's one thing I thank God for is for every phase of my life, I had a mentor. Good. That helped me. So when I was um, when I was younger, my grandfather was there. He wasn't a, a big, big influence, but my grandfather always was entrepreneurial. 
So wow. that showed me that entrepreneurial mindset because he'll go out, he, he did contracting, he'll go out and start a business quick, you know, wow. to take care of his family. So that taught me that when, uh, when I hit 13 and my godfather, uh, Bishop Moore, he taught me the more of the, uh, the character and the dress. I remember one day we were riding down on Broad Street in Richmond and we were by Krispy Kreme. And this guy walked past and he had on a blue uh, dress shirt, some gray slacks, a yellow tie. To this day, that's my favorite ensemble because he said to me, and he had a briefcase, he said, that's how I want you to look every day when you walk out of the house, immaculate. And he put wow. that in me. To the day, my wife joked me because he had a model looking good and smelling good. I cannot leave the house without cologne. My wife jokes me about that because I got to have at least right. two or three bottles of cologne. You know, I got to get my hair cut at least. I, I would go every week. But, you know, at least right. every two weeks I got my son because he put that in me at the age as I got older. He said, here, boy, go get your hair cut every week. Go get your hair cut. You know, I don't, I don't smell you. You, know, you ain't take no bath. You don't have no cologne. I don't smell you. That's how it was. Then when I got to wow. high school and band, my high school band director, who taught me, who got, dug more to the music with me, who taught me the root of life. He used the root note of, of a chord to teach us the root of life. Then when I got to college, you know, it was my, my pastor at the time in um, Chesapeake. And then I had other mentors, and God's always been putting mentors in my life. So I said to say you have to be intentional yeah. about you want to be successful as a father. Because oh, if you yeah. intentionally... My wife would tell you, I go, if I go a place and I go a new place, I intentionally look for somebody who can mentor me. I intentionally look for somebody who can you mentor me and who, who, who can be an influence to me and that I can go to when I need something. If men would do that, then they could be greater fathers even if they don't know how to be a father. Exactly. They, they didn't have their father. Even if you weren't in your child's life, for so many years, if you find somebody who who wasn't in their children's life, but they went back and was successful at it, then they can help you be successful. If you really want it, you can do it. And that's oh, what yeah. I, yeah, that's what I see um, men not doing. There's, there's, there's something I heard, you know, a, a saying is if you're the smartest person in your circle, you're in the wrong circle. Mm -hmm. I surround myself, all, all my, my homeboy homeboys got businesses. They, they make money, they, they, they do their thing, and they are smart in it. And um, it's like an example to my son because I see it in him. My son have people that gravitate to him, and he always tell them, all right, all right, we need to do this and that. I was like, oh, he, he's, he's rising up to be an example. But if you don't surround yourself with people that's more intelligent than you, then mm -hmm. how can you grow? Right. Uh, all all my homeboys got businesses, make money. Uh, I got one that works on a job, but it has music. Uh, -uh. If, if if my circle is is not a winning circle, I need to find another circle. So, as being a father, that's what you got to promote for your kids. You know, all right, you got to check your friends out. Mm hmm. You know, I know it probably. You know, it looked good to be around the athlete or the popular. I was I wasn't popular in the school, man. Me either. I was I wasn't popular because I was broke. <laughs> 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 I was poor, but I wasn't popular. You know, mm. people start recognizing me because, like, I guess my last two years, I think we started a choir and they found out I was in the music. So it's mm -hmm. oh, Calvin can play and sing. You know, so oh, so people start paying attention to me then when they realize I can play and sing. Before that, uh, you know, by the payment no mind, you know, and it was cool. I learned to deal with it. I learned to adapt, but it helped me to be the strong individual that I am now. I don't, mm. I love in my space. And when I'm not in my space, I'm working. Like I'm in the studio now, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. In my space, there's always work to be done. If someone says, no, I ain't got nothing to do. No, there's always something that you can do. You can always. make a business, do something, you know. Mm -hmm. But, yeah, your, your circle makes a difference who you intentionally place yourself around. And I don't want right. to be the smart, smartest one in my circle because I, I want to grow, you know. And I yeah. want to help my team grow. And I want my family, I want to leave something for my kids. 
I don't want to be broken. My kids, you know, like, daddy didn't leave me nothing. I ain't got, mm-mm. No, I'm making businesses. So, you know, once I get out of here, y'all can, y'all got something to look forward to. Yeah. And, and that's you what a father's supposed to do. That's yeah, it right there. You're leaving them a legacy, too, because you're not just leaving them finances, but you're leaving an inheritance. And you're leaving a legacy because they say, OK, I got this money or my dad left me these businesses and these businesses are worth this. And my dad left me this money. But the main thing my dad left me was his work ethic. The main thing that. my dad left me was his character. The main thing my dad left me was integrity. My yeah, dad didn't yeah. just take he didn't just go fishing and bring me to fish. He left me the tools I need to be able to do it myself. How about and that? Keep, yeah, and to keep going what he did, man. And that's that's what's most important. And that's what I believe if more fathers did, it would change the narrative of father of fatherhood. And that's my whole point of doing these interviews mm-hmm. and doing the father's authority is to get a conversation started. Um, this is all just to start a conversation to get dads thinking that's who are watching the thing. Okay, we need to promote this because you got everybody promoting everything. You got um, women will promote being a good mother, being a good father, being a good mother, being a good, uh, raising your daughters, right? Being a good wife. But we don't see men promoting being a good father. That's it. You don't see that that's a it. lot. And so if we don't see it, like you said, if we don't see it, we can't be it. Exactly. So we have to do these things so that other men and even us, because uh, we sharpen each other by doing this, you know, by, by um, doing this tonight with you. I'm learning some things from you because I'm a new father. Right. I'm 45 and I'm just three years in the game. Right. So right. I still need to learn. Um, and that's the whole reason I started doing this, because when my son was born, I said, Lord, I'm scared. Right. I said, I don't know what to do. I need you to show me what to do. God started downloading these things in me, and I started doing this. And he just told me to reach out to other fathers, especially new fathers. So these things that I'm doing, the Father's Authority, not only is helping other fathers, but it's helping me. Right. Because I take some of these things that you guys say, and I go back, and I try them out with my son. You know, And, and I, I'm going to continue to do that because my goals, like you said, like you do, it's to leave a legacy for him. It's for him to grow up to be a great man. Because I told my wife, I said before, that the generational stuff from that's from my father, his father, his father for him stops with me. You know, How about that? I'm starting a new legacy, a new generation of men, of Holloway men with my that's son. Right. So all that stuff ends with me. It's cleared out. It's out. So my son will never get the um, the negative um, or the the lackadaisical stuff from my forefathers because one of the things um, that I said, I told someone, I said, I love my father, my biological father, even though he was not there because he taught me how what not to do how and that? how you to still see. learn something. I still learned something. His impact on was he told me how to stay. And I said that to my wife, if I had never forgiven him, then my son would have been hurt from the, the pain that I held in. So I had to release it so I could be the father that I needed to be to my son because I would have always been, I wish I had. My father didn't do it for me. You know, I didn't, so I don't know what to do. But when I let that go, right. and I gave him. Now I'm able to teach my son, to raise my son, and raise it not out of pain and bitterness, but out of out of someone who's forgiven, forgiven, and has released right. um, the past hurt from biological father. And that's that's what this father's authority is intended to do, man. And and I just want to end it, it like this, but we don't know it all, right? And every day. Is trial and error, but you got to be there for the trial and error, you know, because um, your son might not be like my son. My son might not be like your son. So you just have to be present in the moment, trial, because no one really has all the answers because I don't know the character of your son. You don't know the character of my, or your kids, my kids, you feel what I'm saying? Right. But you have to be present for the trial and error. You ain't going to get everything right. 
But the main thing is being present. That's good. Being like present. That. And you can't go wrong there. That's good. I like that, man. And, man, Calvin, man, I appreciate you for coming on tonight, man. Thanks for having me, bro. Appreciate the words of wisdom, man. And, you know, you're my boy. You know, it's been a All while. Um, but I'm going to be doing more of this, man. I'm going to reach out to you again down the road. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm here, man. To do, man. And I appreciate you, man. You be blessed, man. Tell your wife you and well. I say hello. And Will uh, do. Love you, bro. Until next time. Love you too, man. All right, man. Peace out. All right. You can go ahead. Hang go ahead. All right, everybody. That was my friend Calvin Austin. Uh, we made some good points. I really love the point at the end where he says you have to be there for the trial and error. Every day as being a father is trial and error, but you have to be there. For the trial and error and i believe what he's saying is that you not be there uh, just physically but be there uh emotionally be there with your character be there to teach because sometimes you can be there physically and not be there here and if you're not there here then you're not learning anything your kids are not learning anything so guys i thank you for joining tonight um again as always um you can go and if you want to see any of this, these videos after tonight the past videos, you can go to our website at kingdomrelationships.org and you can see all the videos we've done and other things that we've done. Um, you can follow us on Kingdom Relationships at Facebook, at K Relationships at, um, on Instagram. And if you have any questions, guys, any questions at all, anything you want to hear me talk about, or if you're a father and just want to reach out, guys, I know sometimes as men, we could be macho and not and prideful and not ask the questions that we really want to ask. But, um, guys, if you've got questions for any of these guys that I've interviewed, uh, reach out to me, and I can make sure that you connect with them. If you have any questions for me about fatherhood, um, or if you guys want to tell you, want to give your testimony, um, email us at krelationships at gmail.com. Guys, it was a great time tonight. I had a great conversation with Calvin. Love you guys. Until uh, next week, guys, next week. It's not going to be on Monday night. It's going to be on Tuesday night next week. we got a um a great conversation a great guest it's going to be tuesday night next week of course i'm going to post this um and get the advertisements out but next week is going to be tuesday night so i look forward to you guys um be with me next week love you guys be victorious <laughs>